Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to um, a little more involved um, proportions and dimensional analysis. So the first thing we see is that um, we have a landslide on a highway, which we all know about because of all the storms that you had the past few years. And 3,000 cubic yards of material fell on the road. And we, we know that we need 200 dump trucks. So on another highway, there's even a bigger slide, landslide, and it's 40,000 cubic yards. So if you were working this landslide and these highways, how could you use your past experience of knowing when you had a landslide of 3,000 cubic yards and you needed 200 dump trucks to finding um, 40,000 cubic yards and need, know how many dump trucks you would need, right? So uh, the easiest thing would be to use a proportion, right? Because we know how many cubic yards we need to pick up, and we do know 200 dump trucks are needed for 3,000. So we could figure it out of how many dump trucks we would need um, for 40,000 cubic yards. So um, let's look, go ahead and highlight the important parts. We know for 3,000 cubic yards, we needed 200 dump trucks. And then for 40,000 cubic yards, we need to find those dump trucks. So um, let's go ahead and set up the proportion. So set up proportion. So again, we can do it two ways, remember, like um, category, category, units, right? Or units and category. So I like to do category with category because that's how I organize my, that's my thought process is I like, oh, 3,000 cubic yards with 200 dump trucks together and then 40,000 per X dump trucks together. So I'm going to put it as 3,000 cubic yards, C-U-Y-D, per 200. And I'm going to use DT as in dump trucks. And then that's going to be equal to 40,000 cubic yards, C-U-Y-D, per, and then I don't know how many dump trucks, I'll say X, DTs. But of course, when I start solving, I'm going to take out the units and use units in the end. So the next part would go ahead to be to multiply and solve the proportion. So let's solve for X. So I'm going to have 3,000x equal to um, 40,000 times 200. And then I can divide each side by 3,000 and get x equals. And then, of course, we can go ahead and just use the calculator. We can just go ahead and put 40,000 um, times 200 divided by 3,000. And that should give us quite a few dump trucks. Um, and we get 2,666 point, and I'll just say 67, right? Now, there is some interesting um, parts to this. So because we're dealing with actual trucks, right? Like that. And well, that hopefully your trucks came out better, but right, they're whole trucks. So I do need no matter what 2,666 dump trucks for sure, right? That's going to grab most of the 40,000 cubic yards. But what about this 0.67? If I need a little more than 2,666, that's because. It, the 2,666 will not take 40,000 cubic yards. It'll take most of it, almost all of it, but not all of it. There's still going to be some on the highway that pe that cars can slip and, and cause accidents. So when you see, when you think about it more in a practical sense, in a real world sense, we're talking about dump trucks. So notice that when it comes to money, we can round, right? Like we round to the nearest cent. If it's measurements, right, feet or miles, we can round. But when it comes to actual objects like trucks, we can't have 0.67 of a truck. That means that if we have 0.67 of a truck, that means we may have just the front and the wheel, right? Like 
or like three wheels or something, right? So we have to have the whole truck. And even if the truck isn't full, right, it's still grabbing whatever last little bit remains on there. So that last truck that we're going to need beyond that 2666 is going to just, it's not going to be full, but it's going to be filled with whatever remains from there. So even though your calculator, like mathematically, is 2666.67, in the real world, when you're work, when you're Caltrans and you ask for how many trucks you need to clean up your landslide, you're not going to say, I need 266.67. You're going to say, no, I need uh, 2,667 trucks, right? I need, I'm going to round up one, even though that last truck's not going to be filled. So we're going to need um, 2,660, not six, but because we have a little bit more, we're going to round up dump trucks. And this is why it's important to be realistic. That's what this class is for, is to have some sort of like reasoning for the real world. Okay, so this leads us right into dimensional analysis, right? Because if we want to be able to rewrite quantities in different units, we have to be able to have that process. And dimensional analysis is that process of rewriting quantities in different units. Um, it's just a fancy way to say converting units. That's it. <laughs> so, for example, um, if we have a bicycle traveling at 12 miles per hour, how many feet per hour is this? So, um, notice that it's 12 miles per hour, but they want to know how many feet in that hour. So, notice that in this case, our per hour we have per hour. So the units on the right of per don't change. So we're not changing time. We're just changing different distance. So we're changing distance. Well, in order to change the distance from miles to feet, we really have to know how many miles are in a feet foot or how many feet are in a mile. Well, since a mile is much longer than a foot, I would see, I would think there would be a lot of feet in a mile. And if you don't know, what do you do? Like I, I tell my, um, my children all the time, I bought them a little echo Alexa. I'm like, you don't know, ask Alexa, you don't know how to spell it. Ask Alexa, ask Alexa, ask your, um, Google assistant, right? Ask your phone, right? So, um, you find the information, however you find the information, because you really want to learn how to develop those skills, right? To, if you need information, you don't sit and wait, you go, you go find it and you gather it. So in this case, I do need to know how many feet are in a mile. Now, I have done this problem so many times. I know how many feet are in a mile, but if you don't, I encourage you to use your Alexa, your Google Assistant, your Google page, whatever it is, and ask, because there are 5,280 feet in a mile. So we're going to need this piece of information. So we're going to need to know that 5,280 feet um, feet <laughs> are in one mile. Great, so now we can go ahead and convert. So I'm going to rewrite 12 miles per hour as I did above in the very beginning. And I'm going to multiply this with 5,280 feet per one mile. So I'm just doing this so you could see that um, how like arithmetically we calculate these things. Now I know most of you would say, well, I would just multiply. Absolutely. That's exactly what you should do. But why do you multiply? What's that in between process of like what allows you to multiply? So here notice that we can reduce miles. There's one on top, one on the bottom. Hour stays and 5,280 feet and 12 all stay. So this is going to be 12 times 5,280 feet on the top and hour on the bottom. And we're not going to write this each time. We're just going to write it for right now. So if I put it in the calculator, 12 times 5,280 feet, 
I do see that the there is going to be 63,360 feet per hour. The next part would be next to convert feet per hour to feet per second. So now I want you to notice that you have feet per hour and feet per second. So we could see that the units that come before the word per are not changing, just the one after the word per from hour to seconds. So we're not changing distance, we're changing time. So we're changing time and we need to know Right, how many seconds in an hour? Well, how do you find? Well, I'll give you a moment, go ahead. Go ask your Google, go ask your Alexa, go ask your Siri, right? And so uh, we'll find that in one hour, we have 3,600 seconds is equal to one hour. Of course, you can do this by knowing that there's 60 minutes in an hour, and then from there, you know there's 60 seconds in a minute. So. All right, so let's go ahead and start with what they gave us. So we want to convert the feet per hour, which is 63,360 feet per hour, and multiply it by something that will give us feet per second. So we don't want the feet to change, right? Well, we do know that there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So I have to put one hour on top per 3,600 seconds. Because notice that here seconds come after per, right? Our time units come after the word per. So that means that here's per, the fraction bar, and it goes in the denominator. Another way to think about it is that we have to reduce out hours just to have seconds. So the only way we can reduce out hours is having this hour that belong with the 3,600 seconds on top, right? Right, Because then it can reduce the one on the bottom of the original fraction. There's a couple of ways I've had to think about it, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and reduce out the hours. And then we get 63,360 feet per 3,600 seconds. Okay, of course we don't say it like that, right? So let's go ahead and divide this answer by um, 3,600. And we get 17.6. So this is 17.6 feet per second. The next question is actually just an application of what we've just been doing. It says, how many feet will the bicycle travel in 50 seconds? So it's giving us feet and it's giving us seconds. Feet and seconds. Notice here we have feet and seconds. So we're not going to be using these other pieces except for this last one, where I do know that I go 17.6 feet per second, and how many feet will I travel in 50 seconds? So many of you want to multiply, absolutely. And the reason why we want to multiply is because let me put this per one, right? I'll put that over one, like a fraction, so you can see the fraction bars and numerators clearly, and then you can see denominators clearly. But the reason why I did that is because I want to show you that seconds actually reduce out, and that's why we multiply. And so therefore, um, you would go 17.6 times 50 feet. And so then you would go to the calculator and put 17.6 times 50 seconds, so 880. So you would go 880 feet in 50 seconds. So um, just um, know that here you're going to have a um, 
of an application and you see seconds and you right away I know many of you just want to multiply like your machines but really I want you to understand why you're multiplying and that idea of reducing units out and we're gonna do measurement in chapter 5 and so we're gonna we're only like touch like tapping our feet in the water chapter 5 we're gonna go full in right we're gonna swim and go deep and dive so if this is just touching the idea of dimensional analysis um, in this chapter but um, you know we do want to be able to apply it and under have a deeper understanding that way in the real world we have a full understanding okay great so the last example that I want to go over is a fun one it's about copper spool and it has a whole bunch of different units in it and um, the units are um, feet pounds inches ounces like it's just what right so let's just read it very carefully and then kind of apply everything we need to um, this example brings everything together proportions and dimensional analysis so we have a thousand foot spool of bare 12 gauge copper wire and it weighs 19.8 pounds so essentially what we get from here is a thousand feet weighs 19.8 pounds I just want to see those units right how much will an 18 inch spool of bare 12 gauge copper wire weigh in ounces so right now I have a 12 gauge no matter what so they're the, both the same thickness so we don't have to worry about the difference in the wire it's the same exact wire but if I buy a thousand feet it's gonna weigh 19.8 pounds I want to know how much an 18 inch um, spool will weigh in ounces so in this case what we need is we need the first thing we need is everything in the same units okay so we either got to go, go all feet or all inches or all pounds and all ounces we have to do it to both so the first thing I would do is probably pick um, we could do feet with everything and then pick ounces for the weight and the reason why I pick ounces is only because I need ounces in the end okay so 18 inches oops so let me the so if I want the same units I'm gonna use dimensional analysis first and then use a proportion and rates so the first thing is um, let's go ahead and do the length so the length is 18 inches and to change that to feet I know that there are um, that in one foot there are 12 inches and the reason why I want to write it like this right because some of you are like oh I'm just gonna divide absolutely and that's because the inches units reduce out so if you just put 18 divided by 12 in the calculator which we can do here we get one and a half feet okay now we put that aside I'll put like a little star next to it the next one would be the weight if I can spell it right <laughs> right where um, I want everything in ounces so here I have feet and ounces so here is the um, feet and now I want everything in ounces so I do need to know how many ounces in a pound right so once again you go ask Google ask Siri ask Alexa however you're gonna ask but go ahead and find how many pounds and ounces or how many ounces in a pound right so because we do have 19.8 pounds and we're gonna need to divide those pounds out to get ounces right so the pounds can reduce out I just need to know this piece here 
Well, after looking it up, you'll know that there's 16 ounces in one pound. Now, this isn't fluid ounces. Again, we're doing weight, not um, capacity, which we talk more about in chapter five. We're going to just do weight. So in weight, in one pound, there are 16 ounces. So this means that um, we're going to have 19.8 times 16 ounces. Okay, so if I just go to the calculator and put 19.8 um, times 16, we get 316.8 ounces. Okay, I'm going to star that and I'm going to highlight it. Those are the two pieces we need. Now we're ready. Let's go ahead now and construct... Um, our proportion and solve. I just need to know I have, I just want to know how much an 18 inch spool weighs in ounces. So I'm using the fact that a thousand feet is equal to 316.8 ounces, right? In other words, 19.8 pounds. And I'm going to use that in my proportion. So I like categories. So in my proportion, I'm going to go ahead and use the first type of spool and weight. So I'm going to have a thousand feet per, and instead of the pounds, I'm going to use the ounces that I changed it into here. So I'm going to have 316.8 ounces. So that's the first type. The second type was the 18 inch spool. But I did find that the 18 inches I changed into was one and a half feet. Because remember, I'm going to do categories and then units across. So I have to have everything in feet and ounces now. So I'm going to have one and a half feet per, and then I don't know how many ounces. And again, when I do the arithmetic, I'm going to go ahead and multiply, but like leave out the units till the end. So I'm going to have 1,000x equal to 316.8 times 1.5. And if I divide each side by 1,000, I'll get x, right? So x will be 316.8 times 1 and a half over 1,000. Well, I'll just go ahead and put that in the calculator. So I'll have 316.8 times 1.5 divided by 1,000. And that gives me 0 0.4752. And we wanted to know, again, remember, ounces. How much does an 18-inch spool weigh in ounces? So this is going to be ounces. OK, so um, again, the second part was set up proportion and solve, set up prop and solve. Okay, so now we solved and now we need to, let's just write it all out. So what the the problem asked was um, an 18 inch spool and how much it weighs in ounces. So we can say an 18 inch spool weighs 0.4752 ounces.